Hi, welcome to part two of the photodio series. In this video, we're going to cover how to design a photodio amplifier circuit in two different circuit implementations, photoconductive mode and photovoltaic mode. The main purpose of the photodio amplifier circuit is to convert current generated by the photodio into an output voltage. So how do we design this circuit? First, we have to choose what type of photodio implementation we want. Let's begin with the photoconductive mode. In a photoconductive mode, the circuitry imposes a reverse bias, meaning that the cathode is at a higher potential than the anode. This results in higher dark current that is correlated directly with temperature. A typical application for this circuit can be used in high-speed digital communications and high-quality light meters. Here's a photodiode amplifier circuit. In this circuit, the photodiode is configured in reverse bias, so we're operating in photoconductive mode. The circuit consists of a photodiode, a transimpedance amplifier, and a reference voltage. This equation right here represents the transfer function of the circuit. The equation has two terms, the current to voltage conversion and the reference voltage. The first part of the equation is the current to be amplified and is applied to the inverted input of the op-amp causing an output voltage. The feedback resistor, RF, sets the operating voltage point at the inverted input and controls the amount of output gain. The second part of the equation is a reference voltage, or VREF. A reference voltage is used to bias the output voltage, and it is applied to the op-amp's non-inverted input to prevent the output from saturating to the negative supply rail in the absence of input current. The design goal for this circuit is to convert an input current that ranges from 0 to 50 microamps to an output voltage that ranges from 300 millivolts to 2.7 volts. The frequency of the input signal is 10 kilohertz. For this design, we're going to use Vichet's VPW34 photodiode and microchip's MCP6491 op-amp. For step 2, we need to set up the photodiode. First, let's go over the photodiode specifications, and there are three key specs that we need to look for. Capacitance, peak current, and shunt resistance. To find these values, we go to the data sheet. For this particular photodiode, I was able to find the values on their basic characteristics. The diode capacitance is at 70 picofarad. The peak current at the maximum of life intensity is 50 microamps. And for the shunt resistance, a typical value for a type of circuit like this is 1 giga ohm. One thing to note is that in some data sheets, it's a little more difficult to find these values, so you might have to look at a graph instead of a number on a table. For step 3, we have to configure a transimpedance amplifier by calculating the values of the feedback resistor and the feedback capacitor. To calculate the feedback resistor, we divide the output voltage values by the maximum input current from the photodiode. RF is calculated to be 48 kilo ohms. Now, to calculate the feedback capacitor, we use the equation shown on the screen. Make sure to insert the values of the bandwidth goal of 10 kHz and the feedback resistor value of 48 kilo ohms. We solve the equation, and the feedback capacitor is calculated to be 3.3 puff. For step number four, we need to configure the bias network that will provide a 300 millivolt reference voltage, giving a supply of 5 volts. To do this, we calculate the voltage divide resistors, R2 and R3, by using the voltage divide equation shown on the screen. By selecting R3 as 1 kilo ohm and plug it into the equation, we found that R2 is 16 kilo ohms. This will give us a 300 millivolt reference voltage that we're going to use to bias up the output. For step 5, we need to find that the gain bandwidth of the circuit is large enough for stability. To do this, we solve the inequality shown on the screen. As you can see, we already have most of these values with the exception of CI. CI is the sum of the photodiode juncture capacitance, CJ, which is 70 puff, the differential input capacitance, CD, and the common mode input capacitance, CCM. These last two are the amplifier's differential and common mode values, and we can get them from the data sheet. We plug in all those values, and we get that the minimum gain bandwidth for this design is 259 Hz, and since the typical gain bandwidth of the MCP6491 is 7.5 MHz, we meet this requirement. For step 6, we need to calculate the cutoff frequency due to C2. To do this, we plug in the values of the resistors R2 and R3 and select C2 to be 1 microfarad. 
We solve for the equation and we calculate the cutoff frequency to be 169 Hz. This will help filter out noise from the reference voltage. To verify the functionality of the circuit, we run a DC sweep analysis. When the input current is at zero, the simulated output voltage is 300 millivolts. When the input current is at 50 microamps, the simulated output voltage is 2.7 volts. This confirms that our simulation matches the design. Running an AC sweep analysis shows the small signal response of a circuit. The body plot graph on the screen represents the gain in phase of the circuit as a function of frequency. In this analysis, we found that the bandwidth of this circuit is 17.13 Hz. Now for the second circuit implementation, we're going to use the photovoltaic mode. In photovoltaic mode, the photodiode is at zero bias. This means that the circuitry keeps the anode and the cathode at the same potential. A typical application for this type of circuitry will be to maximize low illuminance performance, low noise applications, solar panels, and energy harvesting devices. Here we have a photodiode amplifier circuit in photovoltaic implementation. The circuit consists of a photodiode, a trans impedance amplifier, and a reference voltage. The only difference from the previous circuit is that the anode is connected to the non-inverted input of the op-amp, making the circuit photovoltaic. On the next video, we're going to show you how to design these two photodiode amplifier circuits on MPLAT MINDY. Stay tuned.